Five Nights at Freddy's 2. With the explosion of popularity the first game had, Five Nights at Freddy's was deemed a success, and even by the likes of Markiplier, it was deemed the scariest game in years. The first game left the story very open-ended for future installments to come in, and the gameplay having lots of refreshing concepts. Scott Cawthon was able to get a sequel just mere months after the initial's release. With the hype building, Scott put teasers up on his website, and the community was in its infancy. So many fans will remember posters such as What is Old and New, The Puppet, and even the Foxy teaser on his website. These permanently cemented themselves in fans' minds and the franchise's history. FNAF 2 was set to be a big success, so didn't live up to the hype of the first game? And is it a good game in general? Let's find out. Let's start with the story this time, as there's more to go with uh, for it this time as well. Where the first game was very vague and only alluded to past events, like the, the animatronics walking around during the day, this game expands on those plot points from the last game. The game opens with uh, the grand reopening of Freddy's, and this lets us uh, think that it's going to be a sequel until we hear the familiar voice of none other than the phone guy who, if you don't remember, died in the first game. We are uh, once again the new night guard, starting your first week and finding out this pizzeria has advanced animatronics that walk around during the day and also are connected to a criminal database. Throughout the week, could the animatronics become more active and we find out more aggressive towards adults, along with the withered animatronics of these characters becoming activated as well. We also learn about an investigation that is happening and that no previous employees are allowed back inside. When we finish this night, we are presented with our check confirming something big. This game takes place in 1987, the year of the bite. On the sixth night, we're told no one's supposed to be here, but that we'll be moved to day shift for a birthday party, and then it'll close for a while. Now, after the story, Let's get on to the looks of this game. The look and feel and the general aesthetic, the look and feel of this game and the generalized aesthetic of it follows the first one, except this one is newer and very, very clean. There's no messes, no webs, dirt, or bad paint, unlike the first game that looked very run down. This one looks clean and like a brand new building while still being very dark and gloomy. To see the rooms uh, through the cameras, you have to use uh, the flashlight, which really helps add to the realism and makes it feel like an older establishment. With the light, you can uh, see rooms, uh, otherwise it'd just be a black void. Unlike the first game, uh, where animatronics don't really look at you, this one, if they're on the camera, they are looking just at you, into your eyes. And speaking of the animatronics, they also got some new looks. The toy animatronics have a plastic and durable look, but aren't very smooth. They're more cartoony and exaggerated, while also being more friendly and colorful. This contrasts with the withered animatronics that have more muted, dirtier, and rougher textures, with holes riddling their bodies. For the best example of this, look at Bonnie and Chica, looking more worse for wear, as Bonnie's missing his face, and all you see is his endo with eyes gleaming at you, and he's also missing an arm. Well, Chica has her jaw ripped permanently open and fixed, with her hands just straight up missing. And then, my personal favorite design, Freddy. He looks like they tried to preserve him to a degree, but of course he has ripples and tears throughout. Then, Foxy. He also looks like they tried to preserve him, but that could be because Phone Guy likes him, and it seems that he has some say or holding in the company, as later on we'll find out he's been there for a while. These two look worn down, and both have dead eyes, that are slightly yellowed in texture as well. Then we have the others, like the puppet who has its iconic look. I mean, not much you can really say, I mean just look at this thing, it's amazing. And we have Balloon Boy, who can fucking die in a pit, I hate him, his designs, whatever, I mean, it fits in, but seems like something we'd see in a later game more than this one, does also look kind of cheap, more like a mannequin than anything, but then we have one that also 
pretty good designs in this entire franchise. The Mangle, who is an endoskeleton with uh, a couple parts of Toy Foxy attached. This design is great. Like, really, really good. The mess of endo parts makes you wonder what happened. We're told that kids ripped him apart. And that she's now a attraction to be put together and ripped apart because the staff got lazy. I'm really intrigued to see more. And it looks like there's even a parrot endo head on there as well. Now, the gameplay. The characters all function very similarly, apart from three. First, the camera system has returned, unlike the doors. Yes, we don't have doors. Not a big deal. Everyone knows this at this point. We get a l more unique way, though. Just a very less secure way of protecting ourselves. We get an empty Freddy Fazbear mask, along with a flashlight. That functions the same uh, as FNAF 1, but this will mark a first for the franchise as we use the keyboard to control it in game. Or the light is used to ward off uh, Withered Foxy, who will jump at you if you don't blind him with your light by flashing it at him. This can work on all animatronics, but it's more on the Withers and Mangle, and mainly Foxy. Now, I guess I should also explain the mask as well. The mask is used to trick the animatronics. Yes, trick them when they enter your office that you are Freddy. It functions the same as the cameras as you have to flip down for it, but this causes a glitch every now and again where you have to make big broad strokes with it just to get to register. It works on everyone but Foxy and the puppet and one other that we'll get into later on. The puppet is simple. To keep her in the box, you must keep the music box wound up. This game is much more of a resource and time management game than the first one was. You need to check the hallway, the vents, uh, and the music box, keeping that wound up. And if Foxy is in the hallway, you need to flash him or use the mask, like on everyone else apart from the puppet. This game is also uh, going to add uh, something new that will become a staple of the franchise. That's the mini games. They were uh, inspired by the old Atari games, uh, not one to one. Andy introduces us uh, to the purple guy throughout our timeline, and his involvement with him being the killer. We also have uh, three first person games, so uh, where we return to the first uh, Five Nights at Freddy's location. And it hasn't been as prominent until more recent games, where in this one we're on Freddy on stage, with two of them being where we see the puppet, and game one, Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Golden Freddy with them looking at us. Now I have left out one person because they deserve a segment all to themselves. Golden Freddy is the best design throughout this entire franchise, as I think the more withered look than normal withered Freddy is a lot more intriguing and tells a story, as he's missing his ear, his eyes, and has more wires sticking out while being slouched like in the first game. The color and texture is very eye-catching along with uh, it being worn down, so it really pulls your attention to it, and blends in more. This is also the first time he's even addressed as Golden Freddy, while as Five Nights at Freddy's 1 he was just called Yellow Bear, and was also just a slightly dirty yellow bear, though I do miss the original one's more opened jaw and the white eyes inside of it. It looked a lot better with that, but I can understand why I wasn't done with this one. Now the jump scares are also very similar, but also very different. FNAF 1 is just a static JPEG that will crash the game, while well, in FNAF 2, it's a giant face FLYING AT YOU! Also, it doesn't crash the game, which is good. Now, they also have two different things. One, you can spawn in with Ultimate Cups tonight using co- what? Oh, we all know the story. 1987 crashes the game with Golden Freddy in uh, Final Fantasy Phrase 1, well, with it further, you can actually control in Final Fantasy Phrase 2 uh, in the custom night. And so, what's my final verdict of the game? I love it. It's amazing. It's a great game, even standalone from the franchise. If you're a big horror fan or just like one quick scare or just to have fun, I recommend it. It's also great as the best franchise, or it's also great as it's the best game in the franchise in my mind. It offers a lot of fun and fair challenges, and unlike the first game, it feels like less RNG. This is an amazing game, once again. I can't stress that enough, and it's just a good time. I love everything about this game, 
even the theories all no matter if they're bad or good but hey y'all have a great day and stay tuned where as in part three of this we tackle five nights of freddy's three springtrap please like comment and subscribe for more stay tuned